Welcome to the Division I Women's Basketball National Championship postgame press conference featuring the Iowa Hawkeyes. We'll hear an opening statement from Coach and follow up with questions for the student athletes. From my left to your right, Caitlin Clark and Monica Sinona. The student athletes will then be dismissed and we'll open up for questions for Coach. Coach, at this time, if you can make an opening statement. Yeah, um, I just want to congratulate LSU. I thought they played a phenomenal game. They shot the ball really, really well today. Um, you know, Jasmine Carson came off the bench and played extremely well. Um, last year, uh, she did, you know, better uh, than what we thought. I mean, they just, they really played well. Uh, they were ready to go. They did a great job. Um, I'm just so proud of my team. I'm so proud of the women they are. I'm so proud of what they stand for. I'm, I'm, the Iowa fans that came here um, in droves, um, I'm so thankful for them. I'm, I'm thankful that I get to coach at a university like the University of Iowa, but I'm telling you, this is brutal. It's really tough to walk out of that locker room today and to not you know, be able to coach Monica and McKenna ever again. You know, that, that's tough. Um, but I am very thankful for the season we had, and I don't want anything to take away from that. You know, we played the national championship game. At this time, we'll take questions for the student athletes. As a reminder, please raise your hand. We'll get the microphone to you and state your name and affiliation. Hi, Caitlin. Uh, Chad Leist, Dakota Des Moines Register. Um, obviously, foul trouble was a, was a significant uh, story in this ballgame. Can you talk through the two offensive fouls in the second quarter and then the technical foul in the third, please? Yeah, obviously foul trouble, not really what you want in the national championship game, especially for our two seniors who have given so much to this program and they have to sit the rest of their, to finish their career on the bench. It's not something that they deserved by any means. And, um, you know, I thought they called it very, very tight. Um, I don't know about the two push-offs in the second quarter. I'm sure, you know, they saw that I pushed off and they called it uh, whatnot and then hit with the technical foul in the third for throwing the ball under the basket. And, you know, sometimes that's how things go. And, um, you know, I thought all I could do is respond and come back out there and, and keep fighting and keep trying to help this team crawl back into the game. And, um, you know, I'm just proud of this group because we never gave up. We never, you know, we could have gone into halftime and been like, what do we do? But our halftime locker room was like, we're fine. We got this. We believe in one another. We have the offensive firepower to come out here and cause some damage. And, you know, I thought you showed our fight. It showed our fight, um, this team. And that's what the story has been all year long. It's just a bunch of fight and mental toughness. And, um, yeah, you got to give a lot of credit to LSU. They played an outstanding, outstanding game. And, um, you know, they made some tough – so some tough threes, some tough jumpers off of, you know, ball screens, um, you know, and sometimes you have to live with them with some of that. So, um, yeah. We're going to stay to our left. Go ahead, Lindsay. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Uh, Monica and Caitlin, I know it can be hard to be reflective at this point right after you walk out of the locker room, but I wonder if both of you could speak to what Caitlin has done for the women's game over the last three weeks. You know, the numbers the other night were bonkers. A lot of people tuned in today and I think that she probably single-handedly made a lot of little kids want to play basketball and just how will that impact be felt next year and maybe the year after if she stays and beyond. Yeah, I mean, she's a phenomenal basketball player. We all know that. She's proven it time and time again, but I think the biggest thing is the way she holds herself and the way she plays the game. Um, she's doing it the right way. She's doing it the fun way. Uh, she's being a role model to little kids who want to grow up and be just like her. Um, that's a great thing. Uh, so I think in these past three weeks, She's done so much, but it's not just these three weeks. She's been doing it, I mean, since she decided to play basketball. It's been a progression to this point. So um, we all know what a phenomenal basketball player she is, but it's a person she is behind it all that's inspiring these kids as well. Thanks, Juan. I think just the biggest thing is, you know, it's really, really special, and I don't think it's going to set in for me for quite some time. Um, I want my legacy to be the impact that I can have on young kids and the people in the state of Iowa. And I hope I brought them a lot of joy this season. I hope this team brought them a lot of joy. I understand we came up one win short, but I think we have a lot to be proud of and a lot to celebrate. Um, and I was just that young girl, so all you have to do is dream, and you can be in moments like this. We're gonna take a question to our right in the front row. Hey, I'm Chloe Peterson, Daily Island. Despite losing, what does it mean for the program to just appear in the national championship game for the first time? 
I think it's huge for us. Um, it just shows the hard work that Coach Bluter and this coaching staff have been putting in since so long before this team uh, did this. They're just doing it the right way. I keep saying it all the time, but we truly are a family. Uh, they're bu they've built something truly special there. Um, I wouldn't have wanted to do this anywhere else with any other team, with any other group of people. Uh, so it's truly been an honor. To our far back left hand side, please. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Um, Monica, you might have a little more freedom to address this, but this has been a phenomenal tournament. You guys were on ABC today. Numbers have been through the roof. And the officiating today was a not great. Uh, the 37 fouls is a record for the tournament. Um, what what needs to be done? I mean, you know, does that hurt the women's game? And, and what, you know, what would you like to see going forward? Yeah, I don't really think that's a great question for me to answer, honestly. I'm going to leave that up to whatever powers may be. But um, we can't live in the past. All we can do is live in the moment. That game happened. Those calls were called. Uh, going forward, we'll see what people decide to do about it. But as of right now, I'm just so proud of what this team has done despite adversity. Uh, throughout the entire season, we've come out and just given it our all. And that's really all you can do um, in any of these situations is just put your heart into it and believe. And we did that. To our right, Howard. Howard Magdal with the Nets. Congratulations to you both on a terrific season. Um, Caitlin, I'm hoping you could take me through the moment when Monica fouls out and you come over and share that moment with her. Obviously, your time with her was going to come to an end today, no matter what happened. Just what was said and what were you thinking in that moment? Well, I was really bummed that, you know, somebody that has made me a really, really good player had to spend the last five minutes on the bench, out of six minutes on the bench, um, and somebody that has given so much to our program. And um, Monica's one of the most fun people to be around. Um, she's goofy, um, and she deserved a little better than that. And um, Monica would tell you when she first got here, she never dreamed to be as good as she is. And I still don't think she realize how, realizes how good she is. Um, and other people don't realize it either. She doesn't get the credit she deserves. And I told her after the game, you know, I'm nothing without you. Um, she's made me a better person, a better basketball player. Um, and I'm just really lucky that I was able to play with Mon and um, share a lot of really fun moments with her. Um, I think we're one of the best post guard duos to ever play the game. And, um, you know, I'm just lucky and grateful um, for the three years we had together. We're going to stay to our right in that same row. Jen Hadfield with the next. Um, just for either or both of you, um, you know, what kind of turned things around when you came out of the, the halftime locker room and went on that run? Can we start with Monica? Yeah, I mean, I think just the belief we had in the locker room. Uh, nobody doubted. We know the offensive firepower we have. We know no game is unachievable for us. Um, unfortunately, it ended the way it did. But um, we number one offense in the country. We have the means to get back into anything. Um, so I think that was the, the talk coming in. Obviously, we knew on the defensive end we had to sharpen it up a little bit. And I think we did. We had stretches of that. Again, basketball is a game of runs. But um, I think we went on a pretty, pretty great one. And Caitlin? Yeah, I think it's just the belief in one another. We know how good our offense is, and we know at the same time, you know, they might cool off a little bit. I'm not sure if they cooled off a little bit. Um, you know, the story of the first half was, you know, number two, she comes in, Carson, and makes quite a few shots and then ends it with a bank three. And it's like, all right. Um, but you just never hang your head. You just come out, keep fighting, and we just know it's only one possession at a time. You just got to get a stop, and we go down and score. And um, I think we cut it to seven there eventually, but couldn't quite get over the hump. And, um, you know, having foul trouble can, can hinder you at times too. So um, proud of this team's fight because, you know, a lot of teams would probably hang their head and, and give up with a, you know, halftime deficit like that. But that wasn't what we're going to do. I want to take a question to our far left, second row. Laura Moses of Valley Sports, Monica, during this game, Twitter was blowing up about how powerful your drop step is. And it's easy for um, Caitlin to talk highly about your game, just seeing you progress. But how would you describe the mark that you left um, on this tournament, the NCAA tournament this year? Yeah, I mean, I just hope people saw how much fun I played with. Uh, I love this game, but I love it for the team. Uh, Basketball's fun to me, but I didn't even like it all the time growing up. But I loved being on a team and feeling like a part of something. And that's what I felt here at Iowa. So um, I'm glad people like my drop stuff. I worked hard on it. So did she. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's just, it's, it's more, it's the whole legacy we have here. So yeah, I don't even know what I just said, but go for it. We're going to stay to our left back row. Uh, JC Christian, ESPN's Anscape. Caitlin. Talk to me about, you know, 
you set the record for the most three-pointers made in the NCAA tournament. You know, you guys had a timeout after that. Talk to me about what you were feeling when you dropped that last three-pointer. Honestly, I didn't know that. Um, I don't know. I just think, uh, well, first of all, I probably could attack the rim a little bit more than I did tonight. Um, but I thought they played really good defense. I thought they had people waiting in the paint for me a little, little more than South Carolina did. Um, you know, took some there at the end of the game that you just kind of have to get up in hopes of, you know, drawing your team back close. But um, it certainly helps breaking a record, you know, when you get to play the maximum amount of games in a season. And that's what I'm proud of is this group. You know, we got to play, you know, the entire time. And I think that's what bums me out the most about this is, you know, I knew this, this was our last 40 minutes together and I was just trying to cherish it. And yeah, I'm sad that we lost, don't get me wrong, but I'm more sad that I don't get to come back to practice with my best friends tomorrow, and that really stinks. We'll stay to our left-hand side. Uh, Lindsay with USA Today again. Caitlin, can you tell us uh, at the end of the game what happened? There's a lot blown up on Twitter about Angel Reese following you around, pointing to her ring finger and taunting you. Honestly, I have no idea. I was just trying to get to the handshake line and shake hands and, you know, be grateful that my team was in that position. Um, you know, that's all you can do is, you know, hold your head high, be proud of what you did, and, you know, all the credit in the world to LSU. You know, they were tremendous. They they deserve it. Um, they had a tremendous season. Kim Mulkey coached them so, so well. Um, you know, she's one of the best basketball coaches of all time, um, and it shows. And uh, she only said really kind things to me in the handshake line, so I'm very grateful for that, too. But um, honestly, I have no idea. And uh, I was just trying to, you know, spend the last few moments on the court with especially the five people that I've started 93 games with um, and relishing every second of that. At this time, we're going to take a virtual question. Joshua Louder, your line is unmuted, and you are able to speak. Please unmute your line. Joshua Louder, Joshua Louder Television Network. My question for the student athletes is, how will this loss motivate you for what lies ahead and that's next? Caitlin, if you can go first. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm not really worried about what's next right now. Um, I'm just going to enjoy what we did. We made history, and there's a lot to be proud of. Um, there's a lot to reflect on. Uh, these last couple weeks, three weeks, have been crazy, um, to say the least. And I'm just thankful that I got to be on this journey with these people. And um, I think more than anything, you know, we're losing two seniors that gave their heart and soul to this program. And, um, you know, obviously, I think they set a really good example for other people that we have in that locker room of what it takes to be able to play on this at this level on this stage. And, um, you know, I'm really grateful that, you know, that's what they did because, um, you know, we have to be bring people along and bring people up to, you know, get back to this point. You know, this is this is our goal every single year. You know, we're not just going to be satisfied with making it here one time. But at the same time, you know, I'm not worried about what's next right now. It's been a really long, really fun season with this group. And, you know, I just need to take some time to reflect and appreciate, you know, all that's come with it. I'll we'll take another question virtually. This is Gabriella Lewis from The Next. Gabriella, your line is unmuted and you are able to speak. Gabrielle Lewis, the next. Um, you know, I don't know if you all have been asked about this yet, but over 6 million people tuning in to the last round. You know, can you, can you speak to that, the growth of the game? And, um, you know, I'm sure the numbers will be even higher tonight of, of what that means uh, to have such a historic viewing. Yeah, I mean, I love it. This is the game we love, and seeing it get the recognition it deserves is obviously super rewarding. Um, it's about time women's basketball gets this kind of viewership, um, and it can only go up. So I'm super excited. Uh, I'm super proud to be part of the team that, that gets to be a part of this, that gets to be a part of this journey. Uh, my five years here, I've seen the game grow in a way I never thought it could. So um, I'm just super grateful that the sport that we love and we're giving our heart to, so many people are also tuning in and loving it just as much. One additional question from our virtual. Matt, your line is open. Please state your name and affiliation. Yes, uh, Matt Tracknoy with uh, Herb FM Sports Radio. And this is for both Monica and Caitlin. Um, first of all, congrats on a phenomenal season and also tournament. Um, but how, well, how were you able to overcome obstacles throughout the season? And what successes did both of you experience? We can start with Monica. Yeah, I mean, I, right now I honestly can't even remember all the adversity we faced, but I just know that me as a person, I'm a better woman, a better person, um, 
because of this coaching staff and because of this team. Um, I've grown individually, not even not even considering basketball in a way I never thought I could, and that's just a credit to my teammates and my coaches. I truly, I, say, I keep saying it, but I wouldn't want to be anywhere else because I wouldn't be who I am now, and it's the best version of myself. So um, I'm super proud of everybody, um, and I wouldn't have wanted to do it in any other place. We're going to take our last question to our right for the student athletes. Hey guys, Remy with the New York Times. Congrats on an incredible season. I just want to go back to what you just said, Monica, about it's about time. Um, this is for both of you. What would you say to people who are just tuning in now to this incredible sport? Buckle up. <laughs> I mean, it's only going to get more exciting and more fun. The game is evolving in such a great way. Um, I'm glad you're tuning in now, but keep it up. Yeah, I think the same. I think once people really turn on the TV or come and sit in the seat, they see how good the product is and how fun the game is. And our team plays it the right way. They play basketball the right way, and they have a lot of fun doing it. But at the same time, they understand there's more to life than just basketball. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing is just when people come and watch and understand the game, they see how fun and how great the product is. Um, and they keep coming back for more, so it doesn't surprise me. Thank you both, ladies. Thanks. At this time, we'll open up for questions from Coach. Lindsay, go ahead. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Lisa, what was going through your head right there when Caitlin's talking about, you know, she wants her legacy to be about little kids? Uh, of course she wants to win a title, but that's not what she said. And what does that make you feel? And then also, you know, do you get to coach her two, maybe two more years? Um, yeah, I mean, that's – I'm sorry. That's what our whole team is about. They know their role models. Uh, they relish in it. And not just for young kids either. This team has brightened the lives of so many people of all ages. Um, yeah, of course, I'm happy I get a coach. Caitlin, another year, maybe two. Nancy, go ahead. Lisa, Nancy, I'm with USA Today. Um, I'll ask you about the fouls. The game has progressed in terms of the players, the coaching, everything else, and today we saw that the officiating has not kept pace yet. Um, just wondering what your thoughts in general and maybe what you would like to see going forward. Yeah, you know, I can't comment on the officials. Um, it's very frustrating because I didn't even feel like I could talk to them, like they wouldn't even listen, you know. That's what's frustrating is that there wasn't even a conversation that could be had. But, you know, when your two seniors have to sit on the bench and, you know, I know they're not, they don't, they don't know they're seniors, I get it, but I don't know, those two women didn't deserve that. I just don't think so. And then Caitlin getting a T, I, I don't know. I just, it's too bad because, um, yeah, it's just too bad. Take a question to our right. Go ahead, Howard. Lisa, Howard Meddahl from the Nets. Congratulations on the season that you had. Um, just two moments I'd like to isolate on if I could. Um, first of all, when you're walking out there, when you're here in that Iowa crowd, you know, when you're standing there next to you know, two women you've coached with for 30 years, what's going through your head just in the lead up to this game? I'll follow up after that. Just gratitude. I am so thankful. You know, I mean, Hawk fans that came here, travel from all over, and I look up and I see my family up. I have the best family. I am so blessed. I don't know why I'm upset about this because I shouldn't be. I'm sorry. I just, I honestly feel so much gratitude. I get to do this. What I love to do, the people that really, you know, make a difference in people's lives, and I get the best family in the whole world. I'm, I'm just so thankful. And just, just related to it, when, when you're gathering with that team after, if you just take me through what some of your message was to them when this game was done. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to get a <clears throat> grip here. Yeah, I just, I'm just proud of them. I just told them that, you know, for them, you know, don't, don't remember this. Remember that they played in a national championship game, you know. Remember that they made it to the Final Four, and I asked them if, at the beginning of the year, if they would have been happy with playing in the national championship game, all of them would have. I just told them there's nobody else I'd want to coach except for them. 
Coach, we're going to stay to our left, excuse me, to our right, the back row, please. Hi there, Leah Jean Denley, Insight uh -huh. News out of Minneapolis. What was the focus of your message during that timeout in the fourth quarter? I don't know if I can remember. The one that I called when they went up 14 or whatever. Just, you know, keep believing. Stop, score, stop. Um, I think we went, we went to a switching one through four ball screens. Is it just a little bit of a change? Um, focus on what we can control and not on what we can't control. There's a lot of things out there we couldn't control, and I just didn't want my team getting wrapped up in it. And um, I think at times we did, though. We didn't succeed 100% in that. I probably didn't succeed 100% in that, but we'll learn. Stay to our right. Jen Hadfield with the next. Just wanted to ask you about a couple of your, for lack of a better word, role players, with mm -hmm. Kate Martin, Gabby Marshall, hitting some shots. Um, yeah. You know, we, we talk a lot about Kaylin and Monica, but, but how big were, were those two tonight? And their defense, too. I mean, they work so hard defensively. And I, I understand we gave up a lot of points. I know that. But we weren't expecting, you know, banked in threes and those type of things that really can hurt your momentum. Um, again, those two women are such <laughs> amazing people that, you know, Kate, what does she go? I got to get my glasses. <clears throat> Kate's three for four from three point line. You know, we have four people in double figures and almost five. Um, you know, Gabby, she's been shooting like that for such a long time after a slow start to the year, and I'm so proud of her for keep continuing to believe that she could do it and she would do it and she did it. So there's just, there's just so many people on this team. They're, they're great kids. <clears throat> Lisa Lindsay from USA Today again. Can you comment on uh, Angel Reese following Caitlin around? T did you feel like it was taunting? Um, I'm sure she was really proud of her accomplishment. And I would be really proud of my accomplishment if I made it, you know, won the national championship too. Um, it, it, you know, I mean, we are all different people and we all have different ways to show our emotions. And, um, You know, I, again, I, I got to focus on what I can control. Going to go to our left, the second row. Hey, Coach, I'm Molly Kayleen from Adweek. You've got a team that's captured the nation's attention and players that have too. What do you think this means for women's basketball, and where do we go from here, and Iowa basketball too? Yeah, I mean, if people are excited about women's basketball because of Iowa, I am so thrilled with that. I. I do believe, and maybe we didn't play it all, all the time tonight, but I do think we play with the joy, we play with teamwork. Um, and, I, you know, it's so fun to be able to be a part of this game at this point. As you all know, I, when I play, started playing, it wasn't like this at all. Um, it wasn't like this even 15 years ago. So, you know, it's just great to see people realizing the power of, of women athletes and people respecting women athletes. I mean, it wasn't like that when I was growing up, you know, kind of looked down on for being an athlete. So now, you know, these women are strong, they're leaders, and for people to recognize that and want to support them, uh, businesses, corporations wanting to support them, it, it's, it's wonderful. And I'm just so glad that I've gotten to see this, you know, this happen. We'll take our final question for coach to our right. Hi, Maria McElwain, Philadelphia Inquirer. So y'all cut it to seven points mm -hmm. uh, late there in the third quarter. What's going through your head? And do you feel like that weird stoppage in play um, killed any momentum y'all had? Yeah, we got it to seven points uh, in the third quarter. And man, I felt good right then. I really did. I felt like, okay, we got this. Um, and then of course we have the, the foul, the technical foul, all that stuff. And it just, it, it gets out of hand at that point. But it's, um, yeah. I felt really good when we got it to seven. I thought, I thought we were going to do it. I really did. I, my team thought they were going to do it. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate all you guys covering women's basketball.
As a reminder, a recording of this press conference and written transcript will be posted in the NCAA's digital hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Iowa's locker room is open for another two minutes.